Last semester I took a ceramics class. Now I know what you might be thinking, oh Tanner was there with a spinning wheel making pottery and whatnot. But this is not what the class was about. This was about analyzing ceramics, and ceramics meaning not only pottery, but glass and rock and granite and all other kinds of ceramics, and looking at that from both a scientific and archaeological perspective. The final project for this class was very open-ended, and I chose to make something called a Lee's disk apparatus. Now, a Lee's disk apparatus is something that measures the thermal conductivity of insulators. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this and show you it working, because it's pretty cool. Let's get started. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Thermal conductivity is a physical property of a material. It describes the material's resistance to the flow of heat flowing through it. On this piece of copper, for example, the thermal conductivity is approximately 388 watts per meter kelvin. This means that it is a very good conductor of heat. If I were to hold this piece of copper and put something hot on the other side, like a soldering iron or a flame, my finger holding the other side would immediately start getting very hot, because it conducts heat very quickly and very efficiently through it. On this piece of styrofoam, for example, that has a thermal conductivity of around 0.01 watts per meter kelvin, I could put my hand on one side and have some large heat source that didn't melt the styrofoam, obviously, and I could keep my hand there and it would be fine because there's not a very much heat flowing through it. It's fairly straightforward to measure the thermal conductivity of a material using a Lee's disk device. The basic working principle shown in this diagram uses two brass disks with your test material in between. The bottom brass disk is heated to a constant temperature using some type of heater and feedback system. The heat then flows via conduction through the ceramic or other test material and into the top brass disk. This heat then dissipates via convection and radiation into the outside world. If you leave the system running for long enough, it's going to reach a steady state where the top brass disk is at a constant temperature. This means that the heat being transferred into this brass disk through this test material is equal to the heat leaving the brass disk through other methods. The temperature difference between the top and bottom brass disk, along with some other properties of the top brass disk, the ceramic, and other things, can be used to determine the exact thermal conductivity of your test material. This is my Lee's disk device. It can be divided into two parts. We have the measurement unit up here and the electronics down here. Everything is mounted on this lab stand that I found in the trash. This is the actual measurement section of my device. This is the top brass disc. It has an embedded thermal probe inside. This probe goes all the way to the very middle and can give very accurate readings of this brass disc temperature. I have my material that I'm measuring. This is fired red ball clay. Then I have the bottom brass disc that's attached to the heating element. The bottom brass disc also has a thermal probe inside and can be unscrewed from the heating element to allow for different size brass discs to be attached. This works if you want to measure smaller or larger samples. The heater for this device consists of a flexible heating element that's been wrapped around threads that I turn into this piece of brass. All brass items on here were turned on a lathe in my school's makerspace. As a fun side note, this lathe actually runs on a Prius motor. Pretty cool. If I lift this up, you can see that the heating element has another hole drilled in the bottom where a third thermal probe is inserted. This is inserted all the way to around the middle of the heating element, such that it has a very quick response time to changes in the state of the heater. All the electronics for this project are mounted to a piece of laser cut wood that is then mounted to the base of the lab stand. This Arduino Uno here runs the control loop that keeps the bottom least disk at a constant temperature. It is also used for data collection from the various thermal sensors. These two boards, which are knockoff out of fruit breakout boards for the MAX31865 chip, basically serve as analog to digital converters that digitize the input from the temperature sensors and send them as data back to the Arduino. Now you may be wondering why I have two of these boards and three temperature probes, and that's because I wanted to use one of these boards to measure both the top brass disk and the bottom brass disk. This makes the delta temperature result more accurate. I accomplished this using this ice cube relay here. This switches the input to this board between both thermocouples back and forth. So that way we can get a very accurate reading of 
the temperature difference across them. This board here runs with the control loop and this is just pulling the information from the thermal probe that is inside the heating element. To actually control the heating element, I'm using this solid state relay back here. Power for the heating system comes from this cord, which is just plugged into the wall. The heater is only around 125 watts, so it doesn't take up that much power. Power for the rest of the logic circuitry is brought over USB when it's plugged into a laptop. Let me demonstrate how you could use this Leeds disk device to measure the thermal conductivity of a piece of ceramic. In this case, a 30 millimeter disk of red ball clay. To measure the thermal conductivity of a ceramic, you need to know these two equations. Equation one measures the rate of heat transfer between the bottom brass disc and the top brass disc via conduction through the ceramic. This K is the coefficient of thermal conductivity. This A is the cross-sectional area of the ceramic. This X is the thickness of the ceramic. And T1 minus T2 is the delta temperature between the top brass disc and the bottom brass disc. Equation 2 measures the heat leaving the top brass disc via convection and radiation. The parameters here are the mass of the top brass disc, the specific heat capacity of it, and this rate of change of temperature of the top brass disc at a given temperature. Now this is something that we're going to have to calculate with the specific top brass disc that we're using here, and I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to start by plugging in the Lee's disc device to the outlet, as well as plugging the USB into my computer. I'm then going to open PuTTY on my computer and open the system parameters for the Lee's disk device. It's connected over COM port 3, running at this speed over serial port. I have everything from this session being logged to a CSV file on my documents. This is the user interface for the Lee's disk device. Mode 0 turns off everything and prints the mode list. Mode 1 turns the heater off and prints all three temperatures every two seconds. Mode 2 turns the heater off and prints the insulated disk temperature every half second. This is useful for when you're trying to measure that rate of change of temperature of the top brass disk as it cools down. This mode 3 turns the heater on and prints the heater temperature every half second. This is useful for when you're trying to heat up the device and watch for when it reaches a steady state. And mode 4 turns the heater on and prints both disk temperatures every two seconds. This is very useful for actually taking that delta T measurement at steady state for the device. Right now it's at mode 0 and the temperature set point is at 30 degrees Celsius. So to find this rate of change of temperature of the top brass disk, I'm going to set this to, let's say, 200 degrees Celsius. So I'll press mode 3 and then 200. So 3 space 200. So we're now in mode 3, and the temperature set point for the device is 200 degrees Celsius, and you can see that these numbers are starting to rapidly rise. This is the temperature probe inside the heater. As a quick change of plans here, I reset the temperature set point to 240 degrees. The internal heater temp is sitting at around 240 degrees Celsius, plus or minus half a degree. If I press 4, and we'll go into mode 4, and we'll be able to read the readouts of all three temperature probes. So the top brass disc is sitting at around 230 degrees Celsius. The bottom brass disc in the left column is sitting at 234. And the internal part of the heater is sitting at what I said before, around 240 degrees Celsius. I'm now going to turn off the heater and start printing the insulated disc temperature every half second by pressing mode 2. All right, so now the heater's off and the insulated disc is going to start cooling down. And to get a proper reading from this, I'm going to set the insulated disc on this piece of insulating fiberglass. Now, it's not going to radiate or conduct heat out of the bottom, because that's where the heat was originally coming up in the test device. It's only going to radiate heat through radiation and convection from the top and the sides, which is what we need to calibrate it. So I'll let the disc sit here, and we'll be able to see the temperature of this disc start to cool down through the putty terminal. Now, the key here is just to sit and wait. We're going to let this cool all the way down to around 50 degrees Celsius, then we'll be able to plot the data points from all these and be able to gauge the approximate rate of cooling at any given temperature. This is the data log of everything that was printed in that serial terminal. You can see here at the beginning when the menu shows up and then I set the set point to 200. 
Down here, the setting point is switched to 240 degrees Celsius. Here's where the mode is set to two and the top brass disc begins to cool on the piece of fiberglass. This graph shows the rate of cooling of the brass disc over the course of 1933 seconds. To find the rate of cooling at a particular temperature, in this case 150 degrees Celsius, I'm going to take the average of the individual temperature drops per half second and multiply that too. This gives us an average of negative 0.16 degrees Celsius per second at around 150 degrees Celsius. Keep this number in mind. This will be useful for determining the coefficient of thermal conductivity at 150 degrees Celsius. As you can see, different measurements of cooling rate that I've taken have been higher the hotter the device is, which makes sense. As you can see in the chart, when the brass disc is hotter, it cools faster than when it's colder. Now that the calibration is done, it's time to actually measure a sample. So I'm going to put this piece of ceramic on top of the bottom brass disc and replace the... I just dropped it. I'm now going to replace the top brass disc top of the piece of ceramic. There we go. Now back to the computer. I know I used putty before for the serial monitor, but the Arduino serial monitor works the same, and you get the added benefit of nice live plots. So, I'm going to fire this up again and try to get that top disc to approximately 150 degrees Celsius. So let's get this started. Let's heat this thing up to, let's say 160 and wait till it reaches steady state. The system has finally reached steady state after operating for about 30 minutes. This is the temperature of the top brass disc over time, and you can see it decreases a little bit, and then it's kind of leveled off, and then it will start increasing a little bit. It's sort of oscillating around this steady state value of around 127.15 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at the different temperatures and how they're changing over time. This is the internal heater temperature, and you can see it's oscillating with an amplitude of around 1 to 2 degrees Celsius. This is just due to the internal control loop that I have running. The bottom brass disc is also oscillating with a smaller amplitude. The amplitude here is around 0.1 degrees Celsius. It's also reached a steady state. The steady state difference between the top brass disc and the bottom brass disc, or the delta T across the piece of ceramic, is 40 degrees Celsius. This number is going to be used in the calculations for finding that final coefficient of thermal conductivity. This is some spreadsheet math for the experiment we just did. So we've got the bottom disk temperature and the top disk temperature. Now the top disk temperature is what we need to use to find the cooling rate at that specific temperature, uh, which in this case is um, 18 degrees Celsius per second. So we also have the disk specific mass, the brass disk mass, the ceramic area, ceramic thickness, and the delta T across the ceramic. This leads to a thermal conductivity of 0.755 watts per meter Kelvin. As a sanity check to make sure that my number is approximately in the right range of what it should be, I took a look at this paper. This paper is written by a couple of archaeologists that were trying to discover the coefficient of thermal conductivity for some other earthenware ceramics found in ancient Greece. And in their experiment, using a commercial lease disk device, they found that when running the lease disk device at a temperature of around 120, 130 degrees Celsius, they got a thermal conductivity between 0.5 to around 0.8, depending on the firing temperature of the ceramic, which is perfect. This lines up very closely to the thermal conductivity that I gathered when using my home-built lease disk device. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. See you next time.